Hello and welcome to a new video. In this video, Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger try to explain how a company can get a sustainable competitive advantage over a long period of time. They also give some background on how Coca-Cola built its long-term competitive advantage in the non-alcoholic beverage industry. So hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Good morning, Mr. Buffett, Mr. Munger. My name is Jerry McLaughlin. I'm from San Mateo, California. First, I just want to thank you for all the effort you put into the annual reports, the letters, and, and these conversations. I've learned a lot, and they're, they're terrific, which is why I'm here from half a country away. Thank you. you know, you've said that great companies are those that have an economic moat. And I understand that phrase to mean a sustainable competitive advantage. Do businesses begin their lives with sustainable competitive advantages, or must that be developed over a very long time? And then, what are the fundamental bases upon which you've seen companies successfully develop sustainable competitive advantages? Of those, which do you think is the most enduring and which is the least? Well, sometimes they can develop it very quickly. I mean, I would say that Microsoft, in terms of the operating system, you know, that was a relatively uh, quick development. But that was an industry that was exploding and things were changing very fast. On the other hand, if you go back to Seize Candy, which started in 1921, you know, there was no way you could build a uh, sustainable competitive advantage, at least that would be recognizable in times measures shorter than decades. I mean, you opened up one shop at a time and nobody had heard of you originally and then a few people did. And box chocolates were something that, that you know, people may have bought once or twice a year for holiday occasions or whatsoever. So you weren't going to embed yourself in the minds of Californians in one or two or five years just because you were turning out you know, an outstanding uh, box of chocolates. So it depends, it depends on the way the industry itself is developing. Uh, you know, Walmart uh, has done a fabulous job in a, an incredible job in a, quite a short period of time. Uh, uh, but even they, you know, they, they took it in the small towns and they, they progressed along and refined their techniques as they went. Uh, but I would say that there could be, in, there could be things in new industries. Uh, I would say with, with NetJets, we have a sustainable competitive advantage, and that's an industry that was only originated in 1986 you know, when Rich Santulli got the idea, and it was in its, inf I mean, total infancy for a good many years after that. But uh, what he has built is, and is building and, and, and fortifying, is that sustainable com competitive advantage. But it, it depends very much on the industry you're in. And I mean, Coca Cola, 1886. Jacobs Pharmacy, Atlanta, Georgia, you know, John Pemberton came up with a product. Did he have a sustainable competitive advantage that day? If he did, he, he blew it because he sold the place for 2,000 bucks today. He's a gambler. Uh, he did, and it took decades, thousands of competitors over that time. And, you know, but they were painting one barn at a time and designing one Saturday evening post ad at a time and all of that. and. And pebbles, you know, at, around the world, in, in World War II, uh, General Eisenhower went to Mr. Woodruff and he said, "I want an, I want to, I want a Coke within the arm's length of every American serviceman." He said, "I want something to remind him of home," and so he built a lot of bottling plants for for Coke around the world. And uh, you know that that was a huge impetus. But that was that was what 60 years or so after the product was invented. Uh, so it 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 takes. It takes a long time in in certain kinds of products, but I could see certain areas of the world where uh, a huge competitive advantage was built in a very short period of time. I would say that probably in terms of of animated uh, feature length films, for example, Walt Disney did that, and you know after Snow White and a few more, it took him a while till it could cash in on it. But he it became Disney and nobody else in that field for quite a while, and fairly quickly. Charlie? Yeah, there are a lot of different models that create a sustainable competitive advantage, and there are also some models of 
of, of um, where you can lose it very fast. You just ask Arthur Anderson. That, that, that was a very good name in America not very long ago. Uh, and I think it would be harder to lose the good name of Wrigley's Gum than the good name of Arthur Anderson. I think there's some perfectly remarkable competitive advantages that people have gotten over time. And uh, the great trouble with the investment process is that they're so damned obvious that the stocks sell at very high prices. Snickers has been the number one candy bar for probably 30 or 40 years now. now yeah, and what, in Russia, it turns out everybody likes Snickers. Yeah. What, how do you really knock it off? You know, I mean, we make candy. We. We would love to displace Snickers, but it's hard to think of ways to knock them from the number one spot. I mean, my guess is that they'll be number one in, you know, 10 years from now in, in, in candy bars. And, and the list doesn't change much in that field because uh, of, if you think about the nature of how you make that choice as to what candy bar. If, if you were chewing spearmint, spearmint chewing gum five years ago and you buy a pack of some chewing gum today, it's likely to be spearmint. I mean, there's just, there's things that you experiment a lot with and there are things that you don't fool around with once you're happy. And, and you know, you can understand that if you observe your own habits and people's habits around you. Uh, but there's other, usually if something can gain competitive advantage very quickly, uh, you have to worry about them losing it quickly too. I mean, when an industry is in flux, uh, there are a lot of people that think they're the survivors or the, or the ones that are going to prosper that, that where it turns out otherwise.